Welcome to the Christian Worship Hour with Pastor Harold E. Salem. The mission of the Christian Worship Hour is to share the good news of the gospel with a lost world and to encourage and equip Christians to pray for our families and our nations. Please join with us and the members of our church family as we study the incomparable Word of God. And stay tuned to learn more about how you can be a part of God's amazing plan to reach the world. We hope you will be blessed by today's program. I'm Pastor Salem. want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. And uh, we're going to have a sermon today that's going to bless your heart. Whether you want a blessing or not, you're going to get it. We're going to look at some of the blessings that God gives us. Oh, so much He does for us. And sometimes we just take it and we don't appreciate it. But we're going to look at some of the blessings that God gives us. But first of all, I want to talk, read some of the letters we get. I know you like to hear them, and we just are so thrilled to hear from so many people. And so let's look at some of them. Here's uh, Montevideo, Minnesota. I listen to the Christian Worship Hour every Sunday morning. It means so much to me. I see you are 97. I pray that you'll be able to keep on preaching quite a while yet. I really miss going to church, but I have braces on both knees. I've had a heart attack so I have to be pretty careful. I've been a widow for 18 years, and listen to this, and two of our sons have passed away. So it is, hasn't been easy, but our dear Lord keeps giving us strength. What would we do without him? And so this is the wonderful Jesus who helps it. And this woman isn't bitter, she isn't hard. And this message today, I know it's going to help her because we see the blessings, some of the blessings that God gives us. And you know what Jesus says? He says, you just come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he says, take my burden upon me, and, and to, because my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And so he's just telling us, bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. And then here's one from Albion, New York. For the first time, I happened to turn to a TV broadcast. I enjoyed the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. I have a prison ministry and have been in touch with prisoners in several states. But I'm, I'm up in years, four years away from age 90. I understand you have a Bible study course. Could you send me to this course and I'll pass it on to those in prison. Yours in the wonderful name of Jesus. And our little Bible course is called A New Song. And it's just a little bi uh, one sheet for each month. And for instance, this month we're studying about Jesus, my friend, and there's some verses to go along with it. And it works good for a Sunday school lesson. And people, we have people in prison that gather together and use it together. It's a very simple little lesson. You don't need to send lessons in back and forth, and it's not a series. It's just each month there's a little different Bible study. So just keep that in mind. Get your pencil and paper ready, and at the end of the service, I'll give you the address and ask for the new song. It's a new, wonderful song. Here's Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they write and they say, please call, please call me when you find the scripture that reveals what angels wear. And she sent her a telephone number. Well, and so this is a deal I'm making with her. I really don't know what angels wear, but when I get there, I'll call and tell her. So, but don't call me, I'll, I'll call you. And we'll find out what these angels are wearing and what they're doing. Well, we know what they're doing. I have a sermon coming up just a week or two now on what the angels do. So you won't want to, won't want to miss that. And then one more is from Seaside, Oregon. In heaven will we know each other by name. And so I have to say, yes, exactly. We will know each other by name. And we have that proven in the New Testament. For instance, Mary Magdalene as a knew the risen Christ when she was out, came to the tomb and the risen Christ was there and she knew him. That's in John chapter 20, John 20, verses 11 to 18, Mary Magdalene. And then Cleopas and his companion uh, recognized Jesus at Emmaus and, uh, and they were walking with him and talking with him and then they recognized who he was. Luke 24, verses 13 to, 20 to 35. And then Stephen, the first martyr of the Christian church. And I think about how the people being martyred for the Christian church now. Stephen was the first one in the New Testament martyred for, for, his, uh, for the Lord. 
And on his deathbed, he saw heaven open and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the throne of God. That's in Acts 6, verses 8 to 15. And I know that we have a scripture that says, Jesus is seated at the throne of God in heaven. But when Stephen saw him, he was standing. And I think that means that Jesus is touched by our infirmities. And when his people are in trouble and suffer, he stands and I prays for them and intercedes for them and gives them strength that didn't have before. And I think of Stephen as he gives his life, but it's this right today. In many parts of the world, we have brothers and sisters in Christ and they're giving their life to Jesus and they're dying for Jesus, just like Stephen. And Jesus is touched in, his, in, in heaven when you, something happens in your life when something bitter like that or your life is taken or when you struggle or when you do, or you'll have great sorrow. He knows all about that. He's touched by our infirmities and he knows all about us because he was in the flesh except without sin. So there's wonderful instances. Will we know our loved ones in heaven? Well, I think I think of a little old lady and it doesn't have a verse or anything to go with it, but just ask this little old lady, Grandma, Will we know our loved ones in heaven? And Grandma says, well, of course we will. You think we're going to be dumber in heaven than we are on earth? How can you beat that? God bless these grandmas. But let's take a look here at about, these, um, about the blessings that God gives us. And our, uh, back, uh, the scripture we're giving is the background for our sermon is in Joshua 17, verse 14. And the people of Israel have been traveling for 40 years and now in the wilderness, and now they're going into the promised land. And so then God just, just gave the uh, areas at the, each lot for, of the 12 tribes. So and God laid it out what it was. And then Joshua has to tell the people what lot they get, what, the, what their part of the whole promised land, what will they get. And so when he gave to give it out, there were two tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh tribe of Ephraim, Ephraim and Manasseh, and they didn't like their, what they were given. They didn't, they were not satisfied. And, and Joshua talks to him. He says, now this God has brought us here. He's blessed us along the way, and this is what he has signed for you and set out for you. And so they were just complaining, and that all oh, this isn't right, and that isn't right, and they just wouldn't, wouldn't give up. So Joshua talks to them, and he does the best he can. But as hard as he tries to please them, he can't please them. You know, there's some people like that. They're just not going to be pleased. They want to be grumpy, and you can't get them out of it. And but the, when you do, but the, that's a poor way to live. You just take it from God what He gives us, and rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, but when you please everybody, you're going to get into trouble. I read about a young man during the Civil War. And he didn't want to offend the, the he didn't want to fle the, the south or the north. And so he took, he wore a, a gray shirt and, and blue pants. So he, he pleased both sides, but it turned out both sides shot at him. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to be caught up in it, so make your stand. Ephraim and Manasseh were just like that. They weren't happy with what God had given them. And, and they, they didn't want to, they wanted it large. That's the way people are. They want it larger or they want it smaller. They want to live longer. They want to live shorter. They're never satisfied, always complaining. God have mercy on these poor souls. They're surely not happy. And so Joshua has to work with them. Ephraim and Manasseh, he's, Joshua says, it's God's appointment. It's God's allotment. I don't have a thing to do with it. You see, it's like if we pa us, we pastors. And when we preach, we, if we preach the Bible, now if you, know, you preach some nice thing, rosy posy things, and I'm going to tell you, every pastor knows what people's going to like and what they don't like. Everybody, they all know that. And so they pay some nice things. But then they'll come and he says, there's a heaven and there's a hell. Or you ought to give 10% of it. Well, I know that isn't going to go over very good, see. But you, you do it anyway. But when it's, if it's in the Bible, if Jesus preached it, Jesus talked about hell, he talked about hell more than heaven. And he did it because he wants to warn people and tell people, steer clear of hell. And if you hear the word of God and you have, you have that chance to accept Jesus, then you're deciding whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. 
Because if you accept Jesus, he says, well, look at what he says in John 5, 24. He says, as he tells us, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. The minute you believe, you have everlasting life. But Jesus isn't done yet. Shall, and But he says, shall not come into condemnation. You won't go into hell, but you're passed from death unto life. You're under, under death now. But when you accept Jesus, you have eternal life. That's the new birth. That's born again. That's born from above. And when you do that, you're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. And your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. All that takes place when you accept Jesus Christ that very second, that very moment, see. And so we have, to, we have to preach. And if people accept it, that's fine. I always tell the young pastors, preach the Bible. Always preach the Bible. Because when you preach the Bible, you preach with authority. You're saying, thus saith the Lord. You're not saying, oh, it could be, it might be, uh, I suppose. I would, wouldn't it be nice if it was and all that? That's, that's trash. You just say, this is what God says. And that's it. That's the end of it. And always remember this too, that he's mindful of you. It doesn't matter where you are, where all in this earth. I think about uh, Steve, I think about uh, David. He was a shepherd boy. And in, in, the, in the Middle East, I've been in the Middle East, in Palestine, in, in Israel. And the stars at night, they are bright, are brilliant stars. And I can just see him there and he's looking and he says, Oh, and I see how many, all that you've created and all the things that you have made. And I'm just one little boy down here in the, in the hills. Of, and I'm watching my sheep the way my dad told me. And I, but how would you ever see me? There's billions of people in the world today. I thought the same thing. And, I, and, and for instance, just think about this. We have to talk about the stars. We, God says in John 1, 12, that as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. Now, when we become a child of God, wherever we are, as in, in, insignificant as we are, and wherever we might be, he sees us and he knows us. And he says, I'm going to come. I have the stars. And he says, I have the stars all numbered and named. I got the name for every star. So I know who you are. I'm touched with your infirmities. I love you. So be content and be thankful because that lot in life, that place in life, that's where God has placed you and he's put you there. And so re just rejoice in that. You and I are in Christ. We're partakers of all the blessings that lie in Jesus Christ. In the scripture it says, if children, then heirs. If we're the children of God, then we're the heirs of all things. And because of God's promises, we have da daily mercies and we have daily blessings and we have, we, we're, we have an entrance into heaven and we have him walking with us, knowing all about us. And it says that the hairs of our head are numbered. They're counted. That means when you lose one hair from your head, a number is missing. When little spar sparrow falls to the ground, the father sees that. How can that be? Well, that can be because he's God. He's infinite. We're finite. We can't comprehend that. God is God. Let God be God. And this wonderful God helps us with it, all these mercies. And God tells us to every believer, Son, thou art forever with me, and all that I have is thine. Ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. And he says, all things are yours because of all of these blessings that you have. And so what we have to do is be sure, are we a child of God? Uh, that's, God is talking to his people now. And the Lord has been talking to his people. And we're, we're his people when we have Jesus. Jesus says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. John 1, 12. Now that's a, stop and listen for a minute. He says, as many as received him. Well, how do you receive him? You just ask him into your heart. He says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, I'll open the door and, and opens the door and I'll come in. 
Helmut Hunt, Helmut Hunt, Hunt has a picture of Jesus knocking at heart's door, and there's no knob on the outside. The only on the inside can it be opened. Only you can open it. Your parents can't do it for you. Your husband can't do it, or your wife, or your pastor, or whatever. Nobody can do that. Only you can do that. Only you can ask Jesus into your heart. I can't do it for you. I, I'd do it in a minute if I could, but I can't. There's, there's just no way. And so you take Jesus into your heart and this wonderful Savior then. He says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become something they weren't. To them gave he power to become the children of God. As many as received him, you're not a child of God until you receive Jesus. And all of these promises are not for you. It's for those who accepted Jesus. Those who are the children of God that accepted the Lord. And I pray in every praise, and I know all of the members of, and all of the workers of the Christian worship are. We're praying, oh, have them pray. Ask them ask Jesus to come into their heart. And maybe some of you are saying, oh, my sins are so bad. God would never take me. I've had people tell me that. Says they tell me, you don't know the sins I've committed. And I committed them sinned against light. That is, I commit, I sinned against what I, I knew I shouldn't do. It. I knew it was wrong, but I did it anyway. And it was a terrible sin. And I can't undo it now. And my loved one is all gone now. And I can't help her anymore or help him. So you see, you think, oh, God will never take me. But him, like Jesus says, him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. And you can take that Bible, all that New Testament in the life of Christ. You read about Jesus and you will never read a place where anybody, where he turned anybody away. You'll have a lot of places where they turned away from Jesus and they left Jesus. And right like the rich young ruler, he went to, he left Jesus. He left him, he was very sorrowful, but he left Jesus because he had great wealth. And when, he, when you will leave Jesus, you walk away from Jesus, you're always going to be sorry for it. But nowhere does it say where Jesus ever turned anybody away. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He says, him that cometh unto me, I will not never perish. He, God says in the, in the book of Peter, he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So you come, and when you do that, then the Lord will bless you. He'll, there he, we'll see that he blesses us so many ways. He, there's never a time when we can't go to the Lord and pray and talk to him and trust in him. There's never a time that you can't, that you can't give your burden to Jesus and, and all your, everything is so heavy on your heart. You don't know which way to turn. You take it to Jesus. There's never a time that he turned you away. There's never a time that you went to him and he wouldn't give you fellowship and watch over you. There's never a time that he wouldn't, wouldn't talk to you and spend time with you and speak to you and, and correct your ways. And when we have in our little Bible study of him. Jesus, my friend. He's my friend because he tells me when I'm wrong. My mother corrected me so many times, and that's been, I'm 97 years old. I remember my mother, I think about her every day, and she corrected me, and she used a stick sometimes, and one time she used soap to wash out, wash out my mouth because I used a word that was not, not a good work in taking the name of the Lord in vain. And I never forgot that. And I thank God that she did that. Or I would have been, probably would have been a dead, I would have been dead in a tomb, a thief and a, an evil man. And I still am a sinner, but I'm saved by grace. My mother taught me to come to Jesus. And Vernon Eggebrotten was a pastor, came to an evangelist. I came to Jesus. Jesus never turned him away. He'll never turn you away, so come to Jesus. And remember this too, that all of the blessings we get, all the blessings we have come from the Lord. Somebody else might give them to us, might, might handle them for them, but Jesus, God is the giver of all gifts. All gifts, every gift is perfect gift, comes from the Father of lights. And I remember reading about one woman and she's a poor, this poor thing and she didn't have any money and didn't, have no, didn't know which way to turn. And it had her little children, two little children. And uh, she always lived for the Lord and loved the Lord. And an atheist lived next door. 
And she always telling him about Jesus. And so this atheist thought, I'm going to pull a trick on her. And I see she doesn't have any groceries. So I'm going to get her some groceries. And he could put them on the door, front door, and knocked. And then she came to the door and she says, here's some groceries. And she says, I see God isn't going to help you, so I'm going to help you. And he says, oh, no. She says, God help me. He just had the devil deliver it. And that's what he does. All these gifts, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from Father of lights. And so this Lord. And then there are all the spiritual blessings, not just material, but the spiritual blessings. Peter talks about that. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. It's tr- absolute truth. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So give your life to Jesus. And I'm not saying that when you do that, everything's going to be just fine. You're going to have troubles. You're going to have trials. You're going to have sickness, but you'll have Jesus. And he's always there to help, and he's always there to list lift you up and carry you along. And don't doubt the Lord. Never question God. Let God be God because all things are working together for good. And I know uh, you can take, take some of these beautiful carpets and underneath they're just uh, the, the threads go every which way. They, none of them make sense. All colors and all stripes and all the, all the rest of it. But when you turn it over, there's a beautiful tapestry and a beautiful picture. We're on the underside now and we don't understand and we don't see it all. But with this dear Lord Jesus, he's going to bring something beautiful, something good. Just trust him and lean on him. But the whole thing is this, in a nutshell, you have to accept Jesus and then you have to trust him. Trust him with your whole heart and just tell him, dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. And just please come into my heart, take away my sins. And then you live for him the best you can. None of us is perfect after all these 87 years. I have to pray every day the Lord will forgive me for thoughts or deeds or, or things that I have done. But that doesn't make a bit of difference. If we accept Jesus, we are saved forever. And they says, well, then why you pray every day? It's like this. Here's a man. He has a son. And that son, they have a wonderful fellowship. And then the son gets in the wrong crowd and he goes with somebody else and he leaves his dad and he goes deep into sin. And that fellowship is broken. That fellowship, but not the relationship. He's still a son. When I accept Jesus Christ, I'm the son of God. When I sin, I can be drifting away. I'm still his son. Away off there, that boy in the hog pen, he was a still a son and he came back to his dad and the fellowship that was broken is put together. That's what God is telling us in 1 John 1, 9. That is 1 John was written to Christians. Christians. And he's telling the Christians, if we confess our sins, you're going to sin. You're going to have sins for omission, commission. If you have a thought of lust, it's a sin. If you have a thought of hatred, it's murder. How are you going to keep from that? And you say, well, I get those thoughts. Well, that you can't help those things come. They're like, somebody said, they're like birds flying over your head. You can't help that. But you can stop them from making nests in your hair. And so don't dwell on those things when you have those thoughts. Ask Jesus, cleanse my heart, Lord, and forgive me. And I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. And that's what Paul did. He had a terrible past, St. Paul. He, 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 he published, the, he put, up, put all the ch- children, took the people of his, uh, uh, and put them, the people that knew the Lord, put them into prison, had the parents de- deny the Lord, did all those terrible things. And he said, forgetting those things that are behind, I press toward the mark, I look ahead. And looking ahead, what do you see? Jesus. You never saw anybody win a race but if you're just looking back. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. 
And when you fail the Lord, just tell Jesus, I'm sorry about that. And he'll forgive you. And you say, how many times will he forgive you? Oh, maybe 50,000 times. He says, my grace is sufficient. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Come to Jesus and walk with Jesus. And then if you make that decision, you write to us the Christian Worship Hour. Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002. 2002. We're in Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. If you like that film, I know you'll love it. It'll help your, your faith and maybe help, help somebody come to know Jesus. Just put heart of a shepherd, heart of a shepherd. It's on a free will offering basis. And then if you'd like to have the little Bible study, and then you get that and just put new song. And now in that letter, there's not just the Bible study, but there's excerpts from letters. There's a sermon to where we're preaching and the top and the scriptures where they're found. It's wonderful. And you write to us and I'm going to give it again because the people on our short wave won't be able to get it any other way. Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002. Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402, or christianworshiphour.com. And now I'm going to pray for you. And in our prayer today, we're going to pray for the persecute, persecuted church in India. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all of those who've opened their heart to you. Help them, Lord, to rejoice in their new faith and to grow in the Lord. Help them to get with Christian friends. Lord, we pray for those on sick beds. We pray for those who are shut-ins. We pray for those who are lonely. Pray for the young people who don't know which way to turn. Pray for the children who need a Savior. And pray for the persecuted church in India, Lord. May they know we love them and care for them and pray for them. Dear Lord, we pray that everything we've said and done in this sermon will be according to your will. And we pray that multitudes will open their heart to Jesus and will see them in heaven and won't that be something. So dear God, praise your name. and Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So now I want you all to remember this, that God loves you. That's the whole story of the Bible. He gave his son. He gave everything he had. He robbed heaven to give his son. And Jesus came and he died a hideous death on the cross. And he paid for our sins with his own blood. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. He did that because he loved you. God is love. And you know the Christian worship hour now we've been on for over 40 years. And we're doing it because we love you. We love the people that are, we're comforting God's people. And then those that don't know Jesus, we're bringing you to Jesus. We love you. And I want you to know that I love you. Again, my whole life to preaching the gospel. And I've seen a lot of people come to Jesus. But I don't want anybody to miss out, not a one. And when I preach these sermons and it gets to you and you don't like it, just remember that I do love you. And I'm preaching the best way I know how. So God bless you, and we're going to look for you next week. You've been watching the Christian Worship Hour, the weekly broadcast that brings good news to the lost and encouragement to the believer. We hope that today's program has been a blessing in your life. Support our ministry by contacting us at the Christian Worship Hour, P.O. Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402, or visit us online at christianworshiphour.com. Be sure to join next week for another life-changing message from Pastor Salem.